In the years since the Russian invasion, parts of Ukraine have turned into giant minefields. And while Ukrainian authorities have been dealing with Russian anti-personnel mines since 2014, the level of mining in the latest offensive has reached alarming levels. Michael T. Ray with the U.S. State Department Office of Weapons Removal and Abatement described the scale of the mining. Government of Ukraine estimates 174,000 square kilometers of its territory, that's nearly a third of the country, may be contaminated with explosive hazards. The U.S. government has committed over $91 million to support demining efforts in formerly occupied Ukrainian territories. European countries are also sending money in specialized demining equipment. Your personal protective equipment, your metal detectors, your trauma kits, the vehicles to carry teams around and the ambulances, this is at the core of a successful demining program. We also do support mechanical demining operations. So these are the larger demining machines that are particularly well suited for uh, demining farmland. Several nonprofit organizations like the Halo Trust have been supporting Ukraine's demining efforts since the initial Russian incursion in 2014. But it's not just mines. It's also the massive amount of artillery being used by the Russians that is causing problems. Their tactics on the offensive, when they're trying to conquer new areas like Bakhmut, to use massive amounts of artillery, has the same effect, because it leaves those unexploded uh, shells and, and uh, mortar shells and other things in the ground that has the same effect. A lot of those mines and shells end up in Ukraine's valuable farmland. According to Ukraine's Ministry of Agriculture, as much as 30 percent of the country's farmland is either occupied by the Russians or unsafe due to mining. And that farmland, according to the European Commission, provides over 10 percent of the world's wheat, corn and barley. For Evgeny Maslov in New York, NRI's VOA News.